So let's continue then. Next, I'd like uh, to look at different uh, application areas and examples. Uh, overall, I will demonstrate that uh, we are looking at a very large set of application areas and a very large set of possible examples. And there might be the question, oh, is this actually reasonable to look at a so large set of application areas in, in a single course? Uh, don't we need separate courses on these different application areas? And at the very end, we will see that uh, among all these different application areas, we have many common characteristics. And because of these common characteristics, it makes sense to cover all these application areas in, in one course. So let's look at application areas and examples. The first one uh, is automotive electronics. Automotive electronics refers to the fact that we have information processing in cars. Obviously, it is a clear case of a cyber physical system because we have a strong link to the uh, physical environment. In this case, uh, we are integrating into the product quite some functions that are uh, based on information processing. In the more developed countries, it's uh, very difficult these days to sell any car that doesn't have advanced information processing. So you find uh, anti-lock uh, braking systems, you find electronic stability control, you find air airbags, uh, efficient automatic gearboxes, theft prevention with smart keys, and more recently, blind angle alert systems have been introduced. So in the high-end cars, you will have an automatic uh, system that will uh, provide you with a warning in case you start to, to overtake and uh, in case there is some other car in, in, the, in the lane that you're about to enter. Uh, these systems are implemented typically with multiple networks and with multiple network uh, processes. We know that there are cases where there may be up to 100 processes in a single car. So that means there is quite some information processing going on in, in a single car. The second area is another area where we also have a very strong link to the physical environment. In this case, I'm referring to avionics. In avionics, we need uh, information processing for the flight control systems, for anti-collision systems, for pilot information systems. The power supply is very important in a plane. The flap control system is important, and also the entertainment system is important as far as uh, 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 um, happy uh, uh, passengers is concerned. In this case, except maybe for the entertainment system, it is very important to provide a very high dependability. We would like to have extremely low failure rates, and in this course I will talk about failure rates uh, a, a little later. So uh, clearly this is a case of a cyber physical system. The third area is again a case of a real cyber physical system. Uh, we know that uh, there are many applications of information processing in medical systems. So, for example, we can try to provide uh, help to uh, handicapped people. For example, in case of blind people, we can try to provide some limited eyesight. Uh, there is an early uh, approach that I would like to refer to. In this early approach, a camera was mounted to glasses. This camera was connected to a computer which was born, uh, worn at a belt. Uh, and then the computer generated some stimuli that were sent to the brain. In this case, the company decided that the safest, uh, or yeah, yeah let, let me stick to that wording, the, maybe the safest way of getting uh, uh, contact with the brain is to drill a hole into the bones and to bring uh, the cables in di into direct contact with the brain. So in this uh, uh, sense, I think uh, safe refers to a safe uh, electrical contact. I'm not sure whether safe also applies to the uh, health situation there. Now this uh, uh, approach is uh, not being used anymore. The pioneer working in that direction died in the meantime, and more recently other approaches uh, have been uh, proposed and are being used these days. 
So for example, there is uh, the approach to translate uh, images into sound and uh, then uh, to provide uh, the uh, blind person with some type of earphones and in this way a blind person can get a certain limited impression of, uh, the, uh, of their environment. There's another case of uh, cyber physical systems and in this case I'm referring to forestry machines. This example was uh, brought to me by my Swedish colleague Jakob Englo and he mentioned that in uh, his country it's very important to have these forestry machines. They are based on a networked uh, computer system where you're using the computer system to control the arms and the tools. You're using the computer system to navigate the forest, to record the trees that are harvested. So at the very end of your working day, you know exactly how many cubic meters of uh, wood you have harvested. And also it's very important to achieve uh, efficient work. Sweden is a country where labor is not inexpensive, so therefore uh, you have to spend uh, the money for, for labor uh, very efficiently and therefore you need this uh, high-tech equipment. Now in this context a very old say, uh, saying becomes a, 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 a gets a new meaning. Uh, many people have been talking about being tough enough to be out in the woods and I think that's very important especially for this type of a system. Now there are more application areas of embedded and cyber physical systems including for example logistics. For logistics the situation has changed drastically uh, with the availability of RFID uh, technology or radio frequency identification technology because in this way the different objects can be located worldwide. Also uh, the availability of mobile communication has allowed unprecedented interaction between the different uh, parties that are involved uh, in uh, sending goods from one place to some, some other place. Also the need to consider real-time constraints and scheduling as well as the need to consider uh, the availability of energy are linking uh, embedded and cyber physical systems with logistics. Now being from Germany, the next uh, example is uh, an example by itself. It's not necessarily a whole application area, but this is an example that takes into account that whenever I travel abroad, I'm considered to be a German. And this means that uh, they associate with me uh, the habit of beer drinking. So I have to do something to please them and to really correspond to their expectations from a German. So therefore we have this uh, very much needed uh, high-tech product which is called a smart beer glass or more precisely looking at uh, the graphical representation we should call this a, graphic, uh, a smart uh, beer mug. So in this case we are taking into account that whenever people are drinking beer there is a very serious danger. The very, seri the very serious danger is not the fact that people get drunk, it's the danger that this mug becomes empty. And that serious danger has to be avoided. In order to avoid that serious danger we can put a sensor into the mug and we can also add a microprocessor to the MUC, we can add an antenna and we can make sure that we uh, have some wire through which we can communicate uh, with some kind of base station and using this communication we can equip this MUC with the needed electricity and also we can use uh, uh, this as an antenna uh, to uh, send a signal to uh, the serving people so that they get an alarm whenever there is a danger that a certain mug becomes almost empty and then uh, the serving staff can actually make sure that there is a refill for this mug. So that's something that you have to report about when as a German you travel abroad. In this case we are using a combination of technologies to make sure that this high-tech product is actually working. We need a combination of radio transmission, we need sensor technology, uh, we need uh, magnetic communication and we need also this mechanism of uh, uh, getting uh, uh, power and, and uh, more precisely energy in, into this uh, uh, high-tech mug. Okay. 
again, this uh, example was brought to me by a Swedish colleague. Uh, there are many more examples uh, that uh, are still uh, application areas uh, for uh, embedded systems. So there are railways, for example. We know that there is a lot of information processing going on. Without the information processing, it would be impossible to have these very high-speed uh, trains. Also, we find uh, techniques uh, of embedded and cyber physical systems being applied in telecommunications, in consumer electronics, in robotics, in public safety. We might have sensors, for example, uh, checking identities of, of people. Uh, we are thinking about smart homes. We are thinking about technology that reduces, for example, the energy consumption of homes. And there are, of course, military systems. Of all the systems that I have mentioned, many of them, or most of them, are actually cyber-physical systems. And some of these systems are these uh, kind of smartphones that are a little less linked uh, to the physical environment. But I would like to still include them in, in the scope of this course. OK, so these are very uh, different uh, application areas. And a little later on, I will talk about the fact uh, that despite considering such a large set of application areas, we can still apply similar basic technologies to all these different application areas. Okay, so uh, after showing these slides, you should be aware of what application areas we will be talking about. Next, I'd like to briefly talk about the educational concept the educational concept underlying uh, this course. In this course, uh, we are using a textbook that has a total of uh, eight chapters. We are starting with the introduction there. Then the second uh, chapter is dealing with uh, the specification and the modeling of cyber physical and embedded systems. The ch third chapter is uh, discussing uh, some key components that we need for the design of such systems. And then the fourth chapter is devoted to, to some standard software that we can use for the design of such systems. Then the fifth chapter will cover uh, evaluation and actually also validation techniques for such systems. Uh, the sixth chapter will be on the mapping of applications to execution platforms. So in this chapter, we are describing how we can make sure that certain applications are running on certain processors, for example. And then the seventh uh, chapter is on optimizations, and there is a final uh, chapter on test. Now, the current course is a somewhat abbreviated course, so we will have a little less time than in the equivalent uh, German course. And therefore, we will not be able to cover test and we will cover optimizations only briefly, but the other areas we will cover. Uh, the overall scope that I'm presenting in this course is pretty broad. And from my point of view, there is a certain reason why the scope for this course is very broad. Uh, the scope is very broad because there have been complaints about the fact that in many cases students have only a very restricted view uh, of the options that are available for design. And I'm referring to a certain source in this uh, context in which uh, this, uh, uh, these complaints have actually been, been written down. Uh, this source is uh, based on the result of the European Network of Excellence, uh, excellence called ARTIST. Uh, this network has uh, uh, published guidelines for a graduate curriculum on embedded software and systems. And now I'm citing from this report, the lack of maturity of the domain has resulted in a large variety of industrial practices, often due to cultural habits. So in this case, we are referring to the fact that uh, cyber physical and embedded systems are a pretty new area. And therefore, the whole situation has not stabilized there. And uh, therefore, uh, there is no standard technique for designing such systems. And therefore, uh, there is no clear indication on how to really proceed for the design of such systems. 
And according to the same report, uh, curricula concentrate on one technique and do not present a sufficiently wide perspective. That's exactly something that I would like to avoid. Uh, if we would not be avoiding that situation, we would be running into the situation that's uh, uh, described last on the slide. Uh, according to, to that description, as a result, industry has difficulty finding adequately trained uh, engineers fully aware of design, choice, design choices. That's exactly what we are trying to avoid. Now also looking at uh, the report, we see that we should cover certain areas. We can uh, uh, figure out uh, that we should also uh, uh, describe the link to hardware. According to the report, uh, the development of embedded systems cannot ignore underlying hardware characteristics. Timing, memory usage, power consumption, and physical failures are important. As a representative of uh, this link to physics, I've put one equation there, but that's only one particular example. So that means we really have to make sure that these uh, links are being discussed in the course. Uh, the last paragraph that I have copied from that report refers to the fact that whenever uh, students uh, at some point in time uh, get hired by a company and whenever they go for uh, a continued education there as a company employee, they usually have very limited amounts of time available for that continued education. As a result, very fundamental issues can hardly be taught in these uh, continued education courses, and therefore it's very important that the fundamental bases are taught at the university and not during uh, continued education. And therefore, I think it's very important that we focus on the fundamentals and less so on particular tools that might uh, be changing over time. So in this sense, I think that this course is consistent with these uh, artist uh, guidelines.